Hello everyone, today we're going to be doing another episode of De Principiis Naturae by St. Thomas Aquinas, or On the Principles of Nature. Uh, the chapter we're doing is chapter 2, called Matter, Form, and Privation. So, side note, I've decided I'll be doing these twice a week because they are kind of enjoyable. Uh, yeah, let's jump in. So first, uh, Aquinas goes over matter, form, and privation uh, one more time. So form is that towards which generation proceeds, and matter and privation are its source. So what this means is just that when something uh, becomes something else, the form is what it becomes, and the potency uh, is what allows it to become that other thing. Uh, then Aquinas notes uh, momentarily that matter and privation are actually the same thing considered under two aspects. So I'm going to give some definitions of privation here in a second, but what's important here is that the two are only conceptually distinct, but extramentally matter and privation are the same thing. Uh, now, next, I've taken the liberty of adding this to Aquinas. This is three different modes of the word privation uh, that I've identified in Aquinas. Uh, one is the privation of proper parts, so it's natural for humans to have two eyes. So if you're missing an eye, you're missing a uh, proper part. There's also evil action, which falls under this category. Um, evil action is a privation of a good action that should have been there. Uh, next, we have privation of accident, so when you're sitting, you're not standing, so you have the privation of standing, and when you're 30 degrees, you have the privation of 60 degrees. Uh, next, we have privation of matter. So this is a, a, a little different, because this isn't strictly privation in a form, it's privation in the matter itself. So when a human exists, the matter that makes up that human isn't currently a rock. Uh, so what we're saying here is that the matter has uh, could have any of these different forms, but currently it only has the human form instead of the rock form. So this has a privation of, uh, this is privation in matter, I guess. Uh, now what Aquinas is mostly going to focus on is privation of accident. Uh, yeah, and then finally Aquinas contrasts his understanding of privation with something called negation. Uh, so if you remember back to the first part, which is privation of proper parts, uh, the converse of this, uh, think about a human missing an eye. It's natural for humans to have eyes, but it's not natural for rocks to have eyes or for trees to have legs. Um, this is not a privation in the form of the tree the same way it would be privation in a human to be missing an eye. This is just a simple negation. So these are uh, different things. Aquinas wants to be very clear that it is privation which allows for change, not negation. Uh, next we have uh, two types of accidents. One will be called properties and one will be called accidents. So properties are these necessary accidents which follow from the definition of a thing. So when you think about a man, uh, the definition of man classically is a rational animal. Now, uh, there is this property which necessarily is included in rational animal but isn't identical to it, and that's risibility. Risibility is just the ability to laugh, and because humans are rational, they have the capacity to laugh. You, there's, it's impossible for there to be a human without a without risibility, without the capacity to laugh. Uh, and then the other type of accident is just called an accident. It would be like sitting or standing. There's nothing necessary in your nature which says you have to be sitting or you have to be standing. You just have to choose one of the two. Or uh, another example Aquinas gives is your skin color. That's not... Um, that's not something which flows directly from your nature invariably. You could have been born with a different skin color, but you couldn't have been born without the capacity for laughter. Uh, next, we're going to do some stuff on matter. So, uh, 
he defines prime matter as matter understood without any form or privation. And here we're talking about privation in the first two modes. Uh, so this would just be matter when it doesn't have any form. That's kind of like its shape and it's not missing anything. So that's just pure matter by its prime matter. Uh, and then uh, another interesting thing which he notes is that matter, act, matter in itself cannot be known. It's only known as part, as, as part of a composite. The reason for this is that what we know about things is their forms. We don't know uh, the matter that things possess. And because of this, uh, the only reason that we know about matter is because it's necessary for the understanding of change and form. Um, and then next, there's this little interesting thing. Uh, he says, properly speaking, matter and form are neither generated nor corrupted, only their composites are. So what he means here isn't that things, uh, he isn't saying here that things don't change form, but what he's saying is that they aren't generated or corrupted in the same way that composite beings are. So when a human comes into existence, they're is a new form attached to the matter, but the form itself isn't generated. What is generated is the, the form might be created, but the generation, properly speaking, is the creation of the composite being. And he gives a short argument for this. If there was a generation in form and matter, then you would have to have uh, these subspecies of the form of the form and the matter of the form and then the form of the matter and the matter of the matter on ad infinitum, uh, which would be nonsense. Then he has an argument finally against the self-existence of prime matter. Uh, for something to exist in pos potency, it must be composed with something that exists in act. The reason for this is that a potency is always a potency for something which actually exists to exist in a different way. Uh, and then, but prime matter without form is just pure potency. And the uh, end of this is that prime matter by itself cannot exist because prime matter by itself uh, is just pure potency. Uh, it has no act, so, and because it's not connected to anything, that means it's impossible for it to exist. And yeah, that'll be all for this episode. I'll be doing another one on Saturday.